to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it. We have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to A Well-Designed Business. It's Power Talk Friday. We are all very much aware of the complexity of the finances of an interior design business, right? (laughs) I mean, I don't think any one of us would doubt that. But that doesn't mean that you don't have to tackle it. And as much as you want to ignore it, When you commit to learning your numbers, you will then understand your revenue streams and you will then therefore, without question, become more profitable. My guest today, Audrey Faust, owner of Faust Consulting, tells us that 80% of business owners are more successful simply because they look at their finances once a month and they know what they're looking at. Think about that. That's hard to ignore. And I will tell you, If you don't understand your numbers, I know that it's easy to ignore the statement because it's really wrapped up in if I don't, what what I don't know, I don't know. And when you don't know your numbers, that statement just is like, yeah, whatever, I'll do other things to be successful. Okay. But here's what I want you to know. When you do know your numbers, every single one of us that does, that hears that sentence is like, well, of course, because When you know where you want to go in your business, in your lifestyle, in what you want from your business for you and your lifestyle and your employees, when you set that intention and then you monitor it monthly from a financial standpoint, that's how it happens. The people who get there are looking at it every month, not putting a number on a blackboard in January and then picking their head up in December and saying, hmm, did we make it? No. So like Audrey says, you are 80% more likely to get there, to be successful if you do this. All right. Here's the other thing she says. She knows that her money mindset can be the obstacle in building wealth. And so that's why she starts there with her clients. Audrey is an accomplished finance expert with an accounting degree, an MBA, and has a neuro coach certification. She works with women entrepreneurs to take charge of their finances. Audrey's clients build wealth through her non judgmental space for learning and growing. Before I get to Audrey, I have some great news. The Power Talk Friday tour is back. What is the Power Talk Friday tour, you ask? Well, this is a one-day, hands-on, in-the-weeds coaching event that is literally a game changer for you and your business. You can be any level business owner. You can be a designer, a window treatment professional, a photographer, a copywriter, a web developer. If you run a creative business and you get value from this podcast, then the Power Talk Friday tour is for you. You will spend a full day with me and five to seven experts from breakfast all the way through our celebration dinner. We will start with several group discussions in the morning and then in the afternoon we move to small five to one breakout roundtable sessions. Okay. It's tremendously powerful transformational day. If your questions aren't answered, then there's a path to get them answered because it's such a small group. You will definitely leave with new friends that will be the beginning of lifelong relationships and you will leave energized and feeling confident in the next steps in your business promise. So plan to attend attend one of the four Power Talk Friday tour stops this year. The first stop is April 5th, 2024 in Dallas, Texas. At this Power Talk Friday, I will have the Vin Man with me, as well as Kay Whitaker, a six-time alum of the podcast, a co-author in my first Power Talk Friday experts book, and an absolute marvel at content creation and digital marketing. Kathleen Anderson will also be there. Kat is our resident Lou University quick 
book specialists and are designed for construction. How do you like that for words? Are designed for construction 201 Maven. And you know, Vincennes is going to be there helping you with your numbers. I'm also going to have Michelle Williams with us that day. You know Michelle. She is also a Power Talk Friday Experts co-author. She is the host of the podcast Profit is a Choice and the founder of Scarlet Thread Consulting and Matrik Solutions. So if you ever asked yourself, can I afford to hire a new employee? How much should I be paying myself anyway? How much should I be spending on my marketing? How do I schedule construction visits for efficiency? How do I set up a chart of accounts in QuickBooks? How do I develop a content strategy that puts me in front of my ideal clients? How, how, how? We have the answers. We have the answers. Come to Power Talk Friday. Go to powertalkfriday.com to learn more and to register. Remember two things about this event. The event is open and valuable to you, regardless of your business size, your business experience, or your gross sales. And the second thing to remember is space is limited to the first 25 registrants for each event. So please do not hesitate if you know you want to join us. And as I'm thinking about it, it was about this time last year that I opened registration for Luann Live. And on the first day, we had more than 60 people sign up. So if you know if Power Talk Friday Tour is for you, don't hesitate. All right, here is Audrey. Hi, Audrey. Thanks so much for joining me on the podcast today. Hi, Luann. It's great to be here. I'm super excited to chat with you today. I'm looking forward to this conversation also. So here's the thing. Um, You do financial coaching for business owners like us, and we need the help, I promise you. Um, The thing about it is, is that it's funny because I read on your website that you said 80% of the businesses are more successful when they look at their numbers every month. Now, I'm going to ask you about that, but my listeners know that my husband, the VIN man, looks at him every morning, (laughs) like literally every morning. So is he 80% times 30 days worse likely to be successful? (laughs) So talk to me about that. What what does that say? Um, What does that mean? Well, are you looking at your numbers, Luann? Well, you see, I'm getting there. (laughs) (laughs) So I will, you know, look, everybody knows me that I always tell the truth. So so I have my husband and I have my mother and my mother has been a bookkeeper for many, many years and she's my bookkeeper. And it's interesting because um, two months ago I started working with Michelle Williams. I mentioned her to you off air and she is our financial guru and all the things on the podcast that she's our go-to person along with Peter Lang and Kim or Liddy and probably now yourself, Audrey. Um, and I had a conversation with uh, um, Michelle a couple of months ago and I'm like, that's it. Line on the sand. I need to close the last loop. I need to know all the things. And I have to say it was very nice what Michelle did because, you know, I'm coming to this conversation knowing like I've got the Vin man and I've got my mom and you know, my relationship with her and Pete and Kim. And I'm consistently in the conversation going, I know I don't like this. You guys do. I know I don't know how to do that. Like you. And she was really very kind, but also I respected what she did. She said, Lou, I've had a lot of conversations with you. She goes, you know, a lot more than you think, you know. Yeah. And as we're getting into it, of course, I'm learning that to be true. But of course, I do have the gaps. And I think that I fall into what you just said. Like, do I look at them every day or every month? And I'm looking at them more often because I'm more in a headspace willing to fix it because before I was looking and I was seeing the problems and I was just like, whatever, whatever, (laughs) whatever. Like, you know what I mean? And it's, and they weren't problems that were getting in the way of being successful or making money, but it is that final little loop to close. So the answer is yes, no, maybe. Okay. (laughs) Thanks for sharing that. That was great. (laughs) I love your honesty. But um, yes. So looking at them every day, sure you can. Is it really going to move the needle in your business? Probably not. Like, and and most, most people have, don't have the time. Business owners Mm -hmm. don't have the time to be looking at them every single day. Right. Mm If your numbers are accurate, which is so important, 
and you look at you and and you can have a bookkeeper or an accounting person preparing them for you. But mm-hmm. if you're not looking at them on a monthly basis, you're not getting the story. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and your numbers actually tell a story. And if you look at them once a year, the story's over. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's no good. I know that. <laughs> that I know. So, but if you look at them once a month, mm-hmm. you can shift directions mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. say, okay, um, you know, this line item or this revenue item is making me more money. Maybe I should right. focus more on that. Or this one isn't so good. Maybe we should just dump that. Whatever it is, or, you know, looking at the expenses as well, right? It's making right. sure there's the net profit. If there is a big net profit, and I say this all the time, like, if you're shocked when you get your tax bill, <laughs> <laughs> because there was a big profit, then, yeah. um, you know, you're obviously not looking at your numbers, so, um, and a lot of people, if, if all the, all the women that I work with know before the, like by the end of the year, if not before, if they're going to have a fairly, not the exact number, obviously, but right. what they're a crocs, good idea, good idea if yeah. they're going to owe the government a lot of money or not. <laughs> yeah. or, so, yeah. and, and if so you're not funny, because- looking at your numbers, you really don't know that. And you're going to be in for a slap in the face. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, and I, a couple time. of things that you, yeah. A couple of things that you mentioned there. So funny because just yesterday as we're recording, um, I had two different coaching sessions, one with one of my chairman of the boards and one of with our, through our exciting windows team. And interestingly, literally that was one conversation was, you know, Hey, we need to figure out so that you know when the taxes come, what you can expect to pay, not get a surprise. Yeah. And it was a new concept to her. And so I was describing to her how we're going to do that and how we're going to set it up and how we're going to look at her numbers so that she isn't surprised. Because right now she's a very, very new business owner. And, you know, she's relying on her husband's accountant and she's lit- and I'm like, yeah, I know where you're at. I was you <laughs> five years ago. Yeah. Like I get it. Right. You know, I said, but you want to come to that conversation knowledgeably. And so we had that whole conversation. And then in the other conversation I had was exactly what you also said. I was like, okay, you're 17 years in business, seasoned lady, smart. Wow. I could tell by the conversation. Awesome. But one of the things that she's never done is track the revenue versus the cost to run that revenue and understand the profit margin of it. Yes. And so I was like, and that's what I said. I said, no, 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 no. We need to know like this revenue stream, what like out of your gross sales for the year, I was like, well, how much came from that revenue stream and how much for that? And that, which that was not known. And I was like, okay, problem one to tackle. Let's know what revenue comes from what streams. And then let's know what the gross margin is. And I said the same thing to her. I said, because what if, you know, one stream is making 20, 30% gross margin and the other one's making 50, 55, 60. Like what are we even putzing with the other one for? Or are there things we can do to the other one to mitigate it, to get it back up to a a, a healthy profit of 50, 55%. And so it was just interesting that literally, you know, and that's why Michelle said to me, you know, a hell of a lot more than you let on. (laughs) Yeah. And, And you don't have to know, like, all the intricates. That's why you hire somebody, yes. right? But what you should know is, you know, you should spend at least 15 minutes, minimum, a month, looking at your profit and loss in your balance sheet. Yeah. Um, yeah. But but yeah. knowing what you're looking at. But knowing right? like what you're understand. looking at. Yes. 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 Yeah, yeah, and yeah, that's, yeah. that's where I help women. I educate yeah. them to understand what they're looking at and... Um, so they're not like blindsided or, you know, I've had women who are like, well, I, what I see on my, 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 I am looking at my numbers and what I see doesn't look right. So I keep going through these bookkeepers and, yes. and I don't know why, is it me? I'm like, no, cause there's so many bookkeepers out there that do data entry and think they're a bookkeeper and really don't have the accounting education behind them to know where to put the stuff or they're not talking to the owner 
say what is this what is that and you know and and you know it's it's so common out there if bookkeepers know how to use QuickBooks they think they're a bookkeeper I I don't mean to slight bookkeepers but you know the other thing I would say is really like do your do your homework um when hiring a bookkeeper too well and the thing is what I find is is that I just talked about this on Instagram yesterday. <laughs> um, we at Luann University, we teach a class called Online Bookkeeping 101. Mm-hmm. Kathleen Anderson is the teacher. And the thing about it is, is that all of what you said is absolutely true about bookkeepers in general and the relationship with the employer in general. But the bookkeeping for an interior design business is not like the bookkeeping for a bakery business or a window treatment business. It is a completely different business model. It is so complex. And um, the chart of accounts and understanding the different classes that you put different things in in bookkeeping in your uh, QuickBooks. And the thing about it is, is the crux of it is I have had multiple people in my chairman of the board program and in just conversations at live events, literally say to me, I'm on my third bookkeeper. (laughs) And literally every time they get a new bookkeeper, the new bookkeeper is saying, oh, this is all done wrong. I'm going to have to redo everything. And I'm watching business owners pay for two and three and four months of services till the new bookkeeper gets it squared away. And what I really believe is, and this is what I, this is why we started doing the online bookkeeping 101 course. What I really believe is, is that there are probably times when the books are messed up. But really what it comes down to is the designer and window treatment professional is not aware of the way the QuickBooks should be set up. And so they take the information from bookkeeper one, who's doing it based on their knowledge with good faith, but then it doesn't work. They can't read the report. Somebody, a colleague, me, somebody points out you should be able to pull this report. They can't. So then they go to bookkeeper number two. But the thing is, it's like you have to have enough knowledge to oversee it so that yeah. you can say, no, 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 no. That's not where that gets categorized. No, 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 no. That's exactly. not what that is. Yes. Right? Like we don't need to be in the weeds doing it every week. And to your point, a lot of bookkeepers won't show up and make the owner sit down or the owner doesn't volunteer to review, right? They just like keep going on. Now that was me and my mom. That was me and my mom. I was like, you're my mom. You got this. And so now we're like, all right, let's talk. (laughs) You know, I mean, I never would have done that with a stranger. You know what I'm saying? But I did, but it, even that it's, it's, you need to do it, right? You need to 100%. have these conversations and, yeah, it, and it sharpens them because they understand better your business, right? right? And, the, and the bookkeeper is not going to understand your business. Like no. I always make it a point, you know, in my CFO consulting business to try right. to like understand their business model as much as I can. So I can make sure um, yeah. that my bookkeeper is doing it right. Because I right. have a, a team of bookkeepers that work under me in my CFO business. So, yeah. like, I and I can point out before it gets to them, no, 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 this is not right. That's not right. This is kind of the business model. So, Exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I love it. I love it. Now, another thing that I read on your website that I thought was interesting, because it seems like a different lane, but I'm curious the point of view and how it, it shows up in your business consulting that you do is you said that team alignment, um, how it may be blocking your, how, um, how employees may be blocking your growth. And of course I know that, I know that concept. I know that, that thing, because, you know, I work with my cousin, Eileen, I work with Jessica Hahn, you know, Jennifer Tukatakian, you know, but that seems like what's that doing in a CFO's lane? Like, tell me about how that Work shows up in the work that you do with your clients. Work, well, you'd be surprised. That. It shows up everywhere, Luann. <laughs> okay. It shows up in my business financial coaching business as well as my CFO business. Because you could, I mean, your team, of course, the best team is somebody that's invested personally in the success of your business. And when you get an employee who is, I'm um, like, educate them grow them, make them happy because most people come to a job, show up 
and do their job and want to leave. They don't really mm-hmm. care about the success of the business. So finding those golden nuggets um, in on your team of somebody who's really aligned and really wants your business to be successful, like they're, they're golden nuggets. Keep them forever. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but, okay. So it's really just good business practice. It's yeah. the same. It, there's nothing specific in the financial lane on this that you're, I, I took it the other way. So yeah, yeah no, no, it's 100%. just like you said, good business practice and um, just be aware of it. Right. And yes. you know, the old, it, the old saying, hire slow, fire quick. <laughs> like, you know, And so many business owners hate to fire people. <laughs> yeah, no. It's funny because we have an episode that's probably coming out next week as we're recording. So by the time we're on air, it's out is on the window treatment for profits podcast. I just had a, a discussion with Jessica Harling, who is a people and a process expert. So she helps you find, hire, train the right people and helps you build the processes in your business. She's outstanding. And the particular focus of the episode was when the person who's not right is like your sibling or your, you know, you know, like, you know, your partner of 25 years or, you know, just a, a friend that you hired that like, what a lot of times happens is you hire somebody and they're really good for that stage of your business. Yes. And then they're not. But when you were like, you were best girlfriends and your kids went to kindergarten together, like that's not so easy. Um, And so we had that whole like, Higher, slow, fire, quick. Yeah. But when it's when it's personal, yeah, it's, it's hard. very difficult to fire quick. It is, but um, you know, do you want to invest in that person and grow them, and are they open to that? There's, there's always yeah. that too. So yeah, 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 no. yeah. It's a yeah, it's a tough conversation. So we we'll, we'll link that episode <laughs> in the show notes in case anybody's like, how do I do that? Not that we have the magic bullet no. over there. We just kind of talked rip about the it. Band-Aid off. And- that, that's just what she said. It's literally what she said. And she's like, you just got to rip the Band-Aid. Oh, we did have some tactical strategies though. So, okay. Now let's talk about, um, one of the things that you also uh, mentioned and I read was there are things to do. And I think you might have even called out the number one thing to do to build wealth. So I'm moving beyond yes. now. I'm moving beyond. Set, we've set the stage. You need to understand your numbers. You need to have quality people running your numbers for you. You need to analyze and just li- literally look at them. You're saying once a month, I think once a week, like at least just run through until you get that really come see, come saw with your bookkeeper and you know that everything is being categorized right yeah. and all the things. But I think you can get to the point where you are a once a month um, reviewing. And we're saying, all that's in our rear view mirror. We're doing all of that mm-hmm. because I don't imagine we could do anything to build real wealth if we're not actually paying attention to our money first. Exactly. So that's kind of first. It's right. So, but what is that thing that you're talking about there? The first thing you should do when starting to build wealth? Um, well, the number one thing, but first I want to say as a, as a tale to what you just said, um, what you focus on grows. And if you focus on your money, then you're going to grow your money. If you focus on your wealth, you're going to grow your wealth. But the number one thing that that holds so many people back is money mindset. Mm. And um, I have a strategy I use with my clients um, where we go into the subconscious and we figure out what their money mindset is. And mm. so often we are carrying around a money mindset that was built in us from our youth. So our subconscious is formed before the age seven. um, And whatever we're around at that time, we're taking all that in, right? Mm -hmm. So for instance, my mom had said to me, I work hard for my money. Uh, I can remember that on the regular, right? I work hard for my money. (laughs) What my subconscious brain interpreted that to until I flipped it is I have to work. Making money is hard, right? Or I have to work hard to make money. So that's not always true, right? There are times, you know, you, you can build a business where you don't have to work hard to make money. Working smarter instead of harder, So, but if that subconscious belief is ingrained in your subconscious, you are going to like burn yourself out trying to build this business 
because you think it has to be that way. And if your brain thinks it has to be that way, it will make it that way. <laughs> mm. So it's yeah, what you think you attract, what you yes. think you grow. That's just what you said a few moments yes. ago. And it's so true. And if your brain is wired to think that work is hard and money comes after working hard, yeah. then every day is going to be, you're going to make every day hard con- unconsciously. Yes. So how do you work with, like, how do you just point out to people, hey, you got to figure out your money mindset, or is that something that you do? Are there that a couple is... of questions you can run us through, like, help? <laughs> sure. <laughs> so I have five questions I typically use. One of oh. um, one is, um, and you have, I, ha- I hate to do it, like, you have to give the answer as soon as I ask the question, or you go into your conscious brain ah. from your subconscious brain. So if I say to you, Luann, making money is, what was the first word that just came to your mind? Oh, uh, easy. Okay. That was it's so funny. That's so weird. I was uh, like ready to overthink it and go about I'm like, well, that is the first word. <laughs> yeah. The first word that comes to your mind. Great. That's perfect. Oh, this is so <laughs> How about this one? You ready? Okay. Saving okay. money is. Oh, that, that was hard. Yeah. <laughs> that, hard, that word was hard. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, um, and, and th- those are just two of the five questions I use. Actually, I'm going to add a few more, but that's what your subconscious is. So oh, if you so feel funny. like saving money is hard, it's going to be hard for you to save money. Ah, oh, that's so funny. So, Okay, I don't know if you're going to ask me the other questions, or you want me to tell you my 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 feelings. No, on these go questions. for it. We'll just do. We'll just. I'll just give them to you. If you want all okay. five, you can go to my website, and there's an audio you can download to get all five. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, so what's interesting is is that these those were really the first two words that popped into my mind, right? Yes. That first thoughts that popped into my mind, and what's so funny is putting them together bookended like that. It's interesting because like when I really start to then play, what are the words that are in my head and the the movie in my brain about myself and my life, literally that movie is, I will always be fine. No matter what, I will figure out a way to make money. But the unsaid is that I can hear now is, and I may not have a lot of it every single moment of the time, but I will always have what I need. Yeah. And you see, that's limiting right there too, isn't it? Absolutely. Like just programming, having what I need as opposed to blah, blah, blah. Right. Like it's crazy. Yeah. But like, I can remember, thankfully we are long past these days, but I guess we were married five, six, seven years, Vin and I, and you know, you, if, if you're going to be married like a couple of, you know, a billion decades, like we are, you're going to have some rough (laughs) patches. It's not all, you know, sunshine and roses. Right. And I remember we were about seven years in and we were like, you, like, I was just like, what are we doing here? How did I find yeah. you and you find me? Because this is bull, right? <laughs> you know? It was just like nuts. And I had three stepchildren living in my house. I had a baby. We were running a business. I was just like, what happened? How, whose life is this, right? <laughs> and and we were also fighting, right? Yeah. And so, and I remember at one point when it got serious, you know, like we were running window works together. I started in window works when I was 21 years old. I didn't have a college education. You know what I mean? It was like the only thing I've ever done and could do and always will be able to do is sell something. And so I'm sitting there and I'm like in my late 20s and I'm just going, well, I was probably maybe, maybe, I don't know what doesn't matter, late 20s, early 30s. And I was just like, well, right. Like you could be the best salesperson ever at IBM, but they're not going to even interview you. Like you're not even getting an interview. Like you're 30 years old with no college degree, like no experience other than I worked in my family business. Right. And so, but the thing was, I remember I was like, I know I will be fine. I will take this baby and we will live in a room and I will put her on my back in a backpack while I wait tables before I live miserably. You know what I mean? And it was like, yeah. that was it. It was like, I always knew I could make money, money period. Yeah. And, but like hearing that the end of it wasn't like, and I will be a multi-billionaire. I'll be like, and we'll probably live hand to mouth, but we'll live. <laughs> 
<laughs> like I didn't say that part, but I can hear it now. Yeah. Like when you say saving is hard, right? Like it's yes. so funny. And of course, you know, in my sixties, there's savings. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's not like, but it wasn't like this easy where I met, met other people that it's part of their every day. It's yes. like some comes here and some goes away. And then they're like 40 years old. And you're like, wait, you have how much saved? Like, like that's insane. Good for you, you know? Yeah. So it's a different, it's a different, it's interesting how it reveals that mindset. Yeah. So, so I, my background, I did a certification in, in neuro coaching, which wow. I learned all the science behind the brain and all of them just geek out on that. But um, that's kind of where I learned how like your subconscious actually runs the show. So oh. 80, you have 80,000 thoughts per day mm. and 95% of them are coming from your subconscious. Wow. And your subconscious was born before the age seven so literally you have a seven-year-old running the show every day. <laughs> oh <say>. my God. <laughs> Unless you really get in there and start shifting this stuff around. So when you get a negative answer to those questions that I ask, I call them prosperity blockers because literally that's what they are. They're blocking mm. you from prosperity. So. so we didn't do the other questions. I don't know if you want to, but I'm obviously a person who is successful yes. and has a certain amount of dollar bills. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Like, I'm not like the wealthiest person on the block, but I am not living hand to mouth right. like I was prepared to live my whole life. Right. But so the thing is, is it that, you know, maybe they're the five questions. Maybe I've got one or two that have that negative mindset and the others are overcoming. Or do you think it's like, well, that actually might be what your immediate self-conscious is, you know, subconscious is, but you are actively working and I don't even realize it to overcome it. Like well, what, how do you know what I mean? Well, I explain, I would say, ask your um, husband those questions and see what he says oh. about saving. Cause that may be, it sounds like he does the money in your oh. family. So maybe he <laughs> mitigated my nonsense. <laughs> so yeah. So. Um, oh, that's interesting. That's I would, I would point, see Audrey. like um, that. I mean, you, if you were like single and by yourself, you might be living hand to mouth because you might That's think right. saving is hard and you just spend all your wealth and, and all your money. And, well, <laughs> and see, for me, like with that mindset of I can always make more. Yeah. Like, exactly. That's the- that That's is counterproductive that. to yes. saving, right? Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. And and here's the thing: I'm not a thing person. Like, I don't have clothes and pocketbooks, and yeah. I drive a Prius. Like, I'm not a thing person. Do you know what I mean? So I'm not spending it either. Like, yes. I'm not a spender. You know what I mean? Um, it's it's just funny. Just like yeah. to me, I'd rather give it, share it, do sure. whatever. You know what I mean? So, um, like I like to have it so I can do those things with it. Yeah. That's so interesting. So interesting. Okay. So, so that's the number one thing that blocks us from creating wealth is our mindset subconscious that was built in as a kid. Yes. Yeah. And I've got three grandchildren. (laughs) One is eight and the other are younger. I'm like, what do we have to do to wire them right? (laughs) Show them abundance, right? Show them abundance. Show them teach them savings and have them make it easy. You know, all that thing, all the things that we know as an older adult now, like instill that in them. For instance, I have a grandchild. I opened a um, mutual fund account for him. And when he's old enough, I'm going to show him how that money grew. Right. Right. So like to show him like, you didn't even know, but this money was here growing for you that I was putting in. And I'm going to show them this is exactly how much I put in. And, you know, yes. hey, that would be an example of saving money is easy when your grandma is putting it in there that's for you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what the universe taught, will teach it. Right? It's easy, right? It's so funny that you say show them abundance because I'll yeah. share you guys with a funny story in our family. So my husband is the guy where now we've, you know, been, we've been, we've been normal people our whole lives. Believe me, four kids, four colleges, you know, the weddings, it's not like, you know, rolling in dough. Like it's been like, let's manage this stuff here. Right. Like, and let's make some more window treatment. Let's make this happen. Right. So, but we've had a very nice life. Right. And so I came from nothing. I know the difference. Okay. I have friends who have 50 times more, but very nice, wonderful life. Okay. Now, but my husband has certain mindsets 
regrets about certain things. Like his father instilled to him, you do something once and you do it at the best you can. Right. So that's when you're attacking work. Like if you're like one time he, his father had him, he was like 11 years old and he told him to sweep out the garage. Well, he swept out the garage and, you know, 20 minutes later, his father's like, right, try it again. <laughs> and then it turned into be a four hour event, clearly sweeping the garage. He's like, if I ask you to do something, can't you do it the best you can do? Like, Don't give me second best. Right. So he's a like perfectionist. This, like, yes. Oh, please. Yes. Thank you. Right. And so. But the other thing my father-in-law was is, and he's a depression guy, right? Yeah. So he, you know, worked hard for his money, all the things. But when he bought something, he bought the best that he could mm-hmm. afford. So if you were going and you were getting furniture and it meant like my, you know, you were going to get this and that was, but no, we'll wait four months until we can afford the best one. So it wasn't like just run it up on a card, but you were getting the best. If there was an appliance and you were doing a thing, Nope, that's not the best one. I want the best one. And so Vincennes has this thing. And I'm always like, well, you don't need that. Do we have yeah. that? Like, what's that not? Right. But what's so funny is you talk about raising your children with abundance. So now we go on vacations, we go on family vacations. We're not the family that even when our girls were like four and nine or four and 11 shared one hotel room. Well, what do we now? We all have a room for them and a room for us. And, you know, whatever we did and we're on vacation. Let's have a nice dinner. Bring dresses for the girls. Let's get dressed up or the boys. Let's all do this. Right. And so here is he taught these girls, particularly the boys, too. But the, the, the story relates to the girls. He taught these girls. Within our means, we lived a very nice life. Yeah. And you should expect that. And so now, as both girls go and they get married, yeah. and they're with their husbands, the one husband, one day, we we're like, they were debating about something. We're all at the beach house, and they're debating about something that's one couple. And he's like, well, of course, five-star Niagara, it's not good enough for you. And we all just, like, looked, and we're like, wait, what? <laughs> and he just stared at us, like, oh, I said that out loud in front of the Niagara's. <laughs> and I'm like, what the heck is that? And he's like, well... I mean, let's just say it as it is. He goes, you know, you guys raise them. They're five-star Niagara. There's no four-star anything. There's no three-star anything. (laughs) (laughs) And why not? We got to live a five-star life, right? (laughs) But he came from a different mindset. So that'll be interesting. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So it's funny. So I love the mindset piece. You know, it makes it makes it um, you know, it's it it hammers it home for us. Okay. And then another question is, what is your net worth and why is it important when building wealth? So talk to us about what that means. Yeah. So your net worth is all of your assets, your cash, your retirement accounts your house or homes, if you have more than one, all anything that has value, even your car, but your car's going to depreciate, but you know, it's the current value of everything. Okay. Okay. That you want to calculate that. And then you want to take all of your debt and Mm. this is revolving debt. So if you have a credit card that you pay off every month, that doesn't count. Um, revolving debt where, where if you have a credit card that you're paying monthly, hopefully not. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, Those days are over. <laughs> then, you know, that debt you would include car loans, house loans, and you owe your parents money. I don't know. Anything right. like that um, you would put in the debt column. So then you take your assets and subtract your debt. And then that's your net worth. And I have a really easy, simple calculator. Um, It's called the Wealth Building Bundle on my website that you can download that has a calculator that makes it super simple. You just throw in all the numbers and it does all the math for you. (laughs) Okay. And so (laughs) the thing is, I like this because we need to have the clarity, right? Like it's in other words, if we own 
a three hundred thousand dollar house, but we owe, we owe two hundred ninety thousand dollars of it. We don't have three hundred thousand dollars of net worth there. No. We have ten thousand dollars of net worth there, right? So, and and I do know that people do get confused. So, like people will say, "I have a million dollar business." It's like, well, right. your business grossed a million dollars, but your net was two hundred thousand. So, and we do throw it around. We say multiple mil. Like I do it here on the show too. But I do try if you really pay attention. You will notice that I will often try to say gross revenue. Like yeah. I really won't say, you know, you have a billion. Business, yeah. Uh, yeah, like I'll, I'll, and and I don't like every time do the disclaimer and explain <laughs> it, but you know, the truth is, like I'll say, what are the gross revenues of your business? Because that is something that does yeah. tell me a lot about your business. I get a lot of information from just Absolutely. that number. I always ask right? that question too, but when I'm working with someone, yeah, because I having t- taken you know multiple business from zero up, I immediately, if you tell me my gross revenues were 200,000 or they were 2 million or they were, they're 5 million, I can literally go right back to, Ooh, what were my pain points then? Yeah. What stunk at that level? <laughs> what was hard? Then? You know what I mean? So yeah, there's always things I'm... at every level, right? New, new <laughs> level, like, new devil, they say. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like when you think back at your life and you're yeah. like, what were the things that bothered me when I was in middle school? What are the things that bothered me? I just had a kid, yeah. a kid at the hairdresser today. She like was saying, something to me and she goes well and she whatever it was and I was like listen you're young but it'll you'll you'll work this out yes. you really will and she looks at me she goes well how how young do you think I am and I like looked at her and I was like I don't know are you in your 20s like like and she goes and she just stares at me like huh and I'm like how old are you she goes well, I'll be 22 next week. I'm like, yes, yeah, sweetie, that's young. Like, stop, right? And then in order to put it in perspective, well, the thing is, like, like, she literally was like, I'm not that young. And then I said to her, I said, think about it. A minute ago, you were in high school. Think about that transition, right? And so that's the same thing yeah. with businesses, right? It's like that difference between a high schooler and a college person and a college person and a 30-something. You know, there's wonderful aspects of every one of those stages. But when you've been through them, you can yeah. put yourself back and take each stage seriously. And that's what we do when we help the businesses we work with, right? It's like, okay, just put me back in that headset, yeah. that first 250000 gross I'm going to make. Like, whoa, right? Like, like, it's so exciting, right? It's so yeah, fun. Yeah, you know, you definitely. yeah, definitely. Yeah, you make a great point, Luann, too. Like, I, it, I, I cringe a little bit when I hear um, women say, oh, I, you know, I have a million dollar, I'm worth a million dollars because they have a million dollars revenue. And I'm like, mm. I'm like, <laughs> You want to figure out how much you're worth, figure out your net worth with my net worth calculator, yeah. and then we'll talk. <laughs> and and your business does have a value, and you can plug that into the net worth calculator. However, the value is what can you sell your business for? If you are the solepreneur, you're the only one making money in that business, let me tell you what, your business is not worth anything. It's not worth something till you start building a team and you take, right. can take yourself out of it. That's, That's right. when you start really creating a valuable business that you could actually sell one day and mm-hmm. profit from. So, And I always say it on the show. You have a you, not a business, yeah. right? You have yeah. a you. That's and, great. And some that's people, you. if that's all they want, and that's great. One thousand percent. I'm right there with you. Yeah. I'm right there with you. There are so many who legitimately intend to grow a you business, yes. and it's valid. I love that a you and, business. I'm going to steal yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> Just credit me out in the world. No that's problem. <laughs> Luann says it's a you business. <laughs> That's it, right? I always say, do you have a business or you have a you, right? Because the thing about it is, is that in my mind, a, a business that's a you, here's some advantages. So if somebody makes a good case to me and they want a business that's a you, that's their their aspiration. If they say things to me like, I am the master of my time. I literally decide daily what I'm doing, when I'm doing it. I'm spending X amount of time with my family, my elderly parents on the, you know, I don't know, mountain biking, whatever it is. And this suits me and I'm earning the proper percentage of earning based on the gross revenue of the business. So 
if I'm a $1 million business, I'm bringing in $225,000 coin to my personal pocket. Now I'm a $1 million business and I'm making a $70,000 salary that I could make go working for a colleague, right? And so the thing is, if that's the case, we've created what we call a job for ourselves, but a really good job, yeah, a job that absolutely. you don't have a boss and a job that you can cancel the Freedom. appointments and go. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And so that is in my mind, a very legitimate aspiration because, but what I hate and what makes breaks my heart is people who have you businesses and either are making say a million gross revenue, but are only taking 80 or 60,000 home. And I'm just like, no, see, what is the point of going to sleep with all of that on your head? If you're not making the CEO owner salary from that you business and you are actually still working 12 or 14 hour days and not doing the things (laughs) that make life wonderful. Right. And so that's like the, in the moment, but then if you also then look at me and say, and one day I'm doing all this because I'd like to sell it. I'm like, Oh, see, sweetie, that part's not going to happen. Yeah. Right. Like that's not going to happen. And, and there are ways to transform use into businesses. Oh, I mean, I did it with one. Yeah. Me I too. did it with one of my chairman of the boards, <laughs> Peggy um, Morgans. She had a 20 year plus very successful business. And she said, I think I might want to retire in five years and I don't want to just close the doors. And I was like, okay, let's do it. And in two years, she went from like one or two employees to like seven employees, completely replaced herself in the business. Yeah. And what was great is, you know, it, she increased her gross revenue by, I don't know, 300,000. I don't remember. You know me. I can't remember the numbers, but she increased her gross revenue, increased her team, increased her efficiencies, increased her profit margins. And she said, I don't, there's actually no reason to retire. Right? At this point. Exactly. The damn thing is running. <laughs> it's running on autopilot. I just that's had to that. sit back. That's it. I mean, and you know, to some and extent, that's, that's an exaggeration, right? But yeah. it's not no, of the course, same you always as have to be in it a little bit. But yeah, yeah, but it's not the same as like when she had 10 pairs of drapes to make and she had to make them. It's like, okay, we don't make any money unless I make these drapes. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? So, and you yeah, know, I sometimes it. it's a little bit, I don't want to say, if I want to say ego, but like, oh, I do it the best. I've been there too, oh, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. I've been there too in my CFO business. And I'm like, but wouldn't it be amazing if you could teach somebody to do it like you? Like, that's yeah. where the power yeah. comes yeah. in. Then. Yeah. That's yeah. where the like, yeah. oh my God, I've created this another other human that like can do it like me. And, yes, you know, so... Yeah. Um, that's funny that came up in a recent conversation with a coaching session too it was like but my standards are higher I'm like okay we need to talk about this (laughs) like you know you know you you know you can have high standards and you can find other people that have them as well or train them into them you know what I mean yeah yeah and 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 you can um you know be people are gonna make mistakes even we make mistakes right all day and, long. And you, I always say, don't stay in bed if you don't want to make a mistake. <laughs> and, and you just have to be forgiving of it, right? Because yeah. as long as the, empl- the employee or the staff member doesn't keep making the same mistake, that's how they learn. That's right. That's how that's they right. learn. So that's right. You got to be okay with show mistakes. Up and be compassionate <laughs> there. Yeah. Yeah. And so then the final question that I uh, wanted to ask you, because you mentioned it, is what is you say the number one reason most people don't become wealthy or rich. So we've kind of, I mean, well, that was, have... that, that goes back to the mindset. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. That, okay. that really because goes I... back to the mindset because we said like, if you have minds, if you're not rich already, you probably have some sort of mindset blockage. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, it, you know, because, and you don't know it's there um, okay. because you will sabotage yourself all along the way. Without even knowing Without it. Without even knowing right. it. That, that's the tough part. That's the yeah. sneaky, insidious part of it. Okay. So the thing is, when you talk about the things to do to start building wealth, mm-hmm. is it really, is there, is there tactical strategies? Oh, absolutely. Or is that literally that just rewiring the brain? Well, I mean, there? you're, if you don't change your mindset and, you know, I'll give you a tactical strategy too, but I want to go back to a girl, um, actually she was an interior designer. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> um, and she joined one of my programs and 
the first thing we work on is mindset. And she came to me after the first session. This program was a group set group program. And she's like, Audrey, like, I thought this was going to be strategy. Like, <laughs> like what, what's going on here? I, I don't know if I'm in the right program. And I'm like, Rebecca, just trust the process. Take trust trust. me. I'm like, we need to start here. She had huge breakthroughs. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was amazing when she was like ready to like quit in the beginning because she, she just wanted the strategies, right? Yes. But if we you want the magic pill, <laughs> um, give me the bullet. Rob, I'll, I'll throw in a quote. Bob Proctor says success is 95% mindset and 5% strategy. Mm -hmm. And I believe that. So I agree. Yeah. But a strategy I will share with you about okay. um, growing your wealth is save first. Okay. So um, save like it's an electric bill, I like to say. Mm -hmm. And that's how I've grown my wealth over the years. And even when you don't think you can save, just pretend it's an electric bill. And right, just right, like right. $50 a month. And I'm one that save in a mutual fund that um, set it and forget it. Yes. Even if it's $50 a month, you are doing something in saving. And it, if you put it in a mutual fund, it's not like it's in a savings account that you can get to whenever you need it. Like right it, takes, Christmas time. Yeah, it <laughs> takes a little more effort. You can still get to it if you're in desperate yeah, but you're need of it. Gonna. But yeah, yeah, you're not going to get it because you're not going to go grab that just because, you know, you want to buy an extra, you know, pair of shoes or something. <laughs> right. I don't right, know. Right. But so, um, a lot of the one I'm like, save first and spend what's left over. Because one of the things I often hear is, well, there's nothing left over. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, of course there's not because you're spending yes. it all. So mm -hmm. like, and you know, not that you can't spend and get what you want. You know, when I work with women business owners, you know, the first thing we do is we build, you know, um, what I call a prosperity plan. And mm. What that and we put down like what their regular monthly expenses are and their their revenue and their team and all of that and we look at it is it you know it's like basically a P and L but AKA budget I hate the word budget because it sounds so <laughs> constraining but right, we build right. this prosperity plan and we we take a look at it and we say okay your bottom number is a negative and you're not even mm -hmm. paying yourself. Mm. So we need to make some changes here. What mm. are we going to do? And sometimes we reduce the expenses. A lot of times it's like their team, right? And we figure out how to get a different team or, or whatever. And, or we increase the revenue. Right. Um, those are your two options. Right. <laughs> it's that, it's really yeah, that yeah. simple. And I'm not going to say you have to reduce your expenses. Like, it's up to you as the business owner to make that decision. And, but now you've got the picture in front of you. If you ever want to like, you know, start paying yourself what you truly deserve, we need to make some changes. So um, I've had so much success with that because so many women never look at that. Right. They just look at what's in the bank account, right? Well, that's irrelevant in my opinion. Like, right, right. <laughs> like you got to look at your monthly expenses and what you're spending and what you're bringing in and what's left over. Um, so I've had a couple different theories, like sometimes we, or strategies, sometimes we reduce the expenses and we increase the revenue. And that's amazing. Or, right. you know, I've had um, some clients were like, oh, well, I can't, like their biggest expense usually is their team. I, I need this team. I wouldn't have a business without this team. I'm like, okay, so we need to increase your revenue. Right. And um, I was working uh, with this girl recently, um, Tiffany. And first of all, we reprogrammed her mindset. She used to have making money is hard. We... Um, started reprogramming, programming that, reprogramming that, and she went from a regular monthly income of 20,000 um, when we started working together, like almost the entire year was 20,000. January, 
she had a $200,000 month. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> she 10 extra revenue by changing that mindset of making money is hard. Wow. And, wow. and, and she was the one that didn't want to reduce her team. And I'm like, okay, great. Let's, let's bring this money in. <laughs> right. Um, well, and I guess sometimes you need to, if you, first of all, what, what, what I know is if you're not paying attention, yes. then everything just happens. Yes. Like it just keeps happening the same way <laughs> year after year and nothing changes, exactly. right? Because we're not looking at what to change. Right. And in that regard, if you get very clear on, here's my obstacle, my team is, you know, I'm overstaffed or they're overpaid for not, they are not overpaid, but overpaid for the revenue. Right. Yeah. Cause that's right. what the relevant relationship exactly. is. Yeah. Right. It's if you are so adverse to reducing the team, then it kind of gives you the juice for, well, yes. then I guess I've got to do this. <laughs> exactly. Right. It's like either, you know, like there's one, something's got to get, yeah. like, you know, so you and, and, get and, paid. So, something's got to change. <laughs> yeah. And, and sometimes that's all the clarity that somebody yeah. needs because I can imagine just not knowing your particular client, but having had a billion conversations about it, it's like, I guarantee that some level you know, there's a gross revenue that's happening that seems sort of like a good status number yeah. for her. And it outwardly is look looking like an like an appropriate yet successful business. And the team is there and all the things look like they're in place. But when the drip, you know, Vinny calls yeah, it the drip, the drip, the drip that come back to her <laughs> is not, not there. <laughs> Then it's sort of like, what is happening here? Yeah. And then what happens is a lot of business owners will exist in that for years, yeah. whether it's one or five or eight, because they don't pick their head up to understand what do I need to look at in order to make a change? They're so busy doing the things yes. and thinking, well, this is the year there's going to be something left for me. <laughs> and it doesn't happen that way. You no. have to intend. Exactly. Even like Michelle, it's so funny because like my first meeting with Michelle, literally we, she said, okay, so we went through all the different things and blah, 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 and all the revenue streams and the profit margins of all the different revenue streams, you know, because we had all that information. And then she, when we ended it, she said to me, what do you want to earn net next year? Mm. And I was like, and so I said Brilliant. the number and she's like, all right. And we want to, we want to have built in the yeah. taxes to pay for that number. Exactly. We want to, blah, 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 right? And I was like, yeah. And she was like, okay, I'll see you next week. I'm like, okay. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah, you I kind of say, well, how much do you want to make? Like, how much yeah, do you want to, you know, that's kind of what I said to Tiffany. I'm like, okay, well, you're not paying yourself now. You told me that. I'm like, so basically you're working for free and I know you're working hard and working for free. So essentially you could shut this whole thing down and go get a job. Right. And make more money. I said, right. so let's figure this out. And I'm like, how right. much do you want to make? And she gave me her number. And I'm like, okay, well, this is where you got to be. Yep. yep. <laughs> and we factored no, in so like what she wanted to make and like what you said, the taxes. And I'm like, yep. Okay. Yep. And, and, and then, <laughs> then she like tripled it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you are my yeah. girl. I was that's like, it, I love it. it. Yeah, because once you understand what's possible, yeah. right? You on it's it's that's the empowerment that yeah. comes with this information and knowledge. Hundred percent. It's like, oh, this was all just happening to me, and yeah. now I'm actively happening to it. Right? Yep. It's like I am not passively just receiving and seeing what's happening in my business at the end of every weekday, month, and year. Oh, what was the result? It's like, no, 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 no. We're intending the results. We're planning for the results. Yep. We're working towards the results. It's, you know, it's so funny because like for me, having been in sales all these years, and of course, my main role at Window Works was sales. You start every single year you start every single month, you start every single day with what is my goal yeah. number today. And the thing is for me, I had my goal number, but I understood from the planning meetings that Vin and I, and at, over the years as the team grew with the team, what was built into that goal number, you know, that goal, I'm not saying gold, goal number. So I knew if I had to sell 
one hundred thousand right. dollars this week. You know, that was because we were doing advertising based on that. We were paying employees based on that. We were, right. So, but he just put the number in front of me. He's like, yeah. "This is the number, lady. Go get it." Like, All right, I'm 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 gone. I'll see you. Bye. I'll be back. <laughs> yeah, that's basically what I did with Tiffany. I just like, okay, here's yeah. your number. Yeah. You want? <laughs> yeah, you want to start paying you- yourself. Yep. Go get it. I'm going to tell you what. <laughs> anytime our window works team has been off a number, right? So we know every single month and every single Monday we review where are we month to date, where are we year to date, but, 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 right? We have had times. I remember one time last summer, we were five days to the end of the month. We were $160,000 off monthly goal, right? Five selling days left. And I'm going to tell you what, if you just looked, first of all, if you didn't know that you were 160K off of your number, five days left, you probably, probably would have maybe closed 10 or 20 or $30,000 in sales in those five days because you have no idea what's going on. And just like, it's all fine. I guess somebody will pay the bills. It'll be great. Right. But instead we sat the sales team down, JC did. And he's like, we, we have to close 160 in five days. (laughs) And we like, literally we're like, okay, there's four of you. Divide it by four. What is it? You each have to get 40. And we're like, it's Monday. You have till Friday. So you have to get 40,000 by Friday divided by five. What is that? I have no idea. What's what's not even numbers for me. Do you know what that is? 40,000 oh. divided by five. Uh, eight. I don't know. <laughs> eight. There you go. Eight. Right? And so and so here was the thing. This is the power of doing this because at the beginning of that paragraph, it was like, we have to hit 160,000 thousand dollars by Friday. And at the end of that paragraph of that, co- that tiny conversation was like, Oh, I have to do 8,000 a day. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It was like, okay. I mean, that's two phone calls, you know, yeah. Drapes are $2,000 a drape. Like, come on. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Break it down to drapes. I need to sell. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's like, drapes. You know, All right. Like a thousand, you know what I mean? And, and, but that's the thing yeah. of, understanding, tracking, and following because Mm -hmm. otherwise we would just close out every month and at the end of the year we'd be like, wow, we had a goal for 3.8, but we did 2.8. That sucks. All right, let's try again next year. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, no, that's, you know, you that's a great point. And that's kind of what, you know, inspired Tiffany, you know, because she was, most business owners are great at sales, right? They wouldn't have gotten where they got to if they weren't. And she was like, oh, okay. She just told me what I need to do. I'm going to go do it. That's it. And we we literally did. did what you said. She really needed to bring in. So her, her like package is like 50,000. So really she only needed to bring in one client in January and she brought in four. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So, but But you're not going to bring any in without the goal. Yeah. And we, without the clear conversation. Yeah. Yeah. And then we made a list of eight, like hot, warm leads that she already had. So it's exactly. kind of like, you know, okay, we have these eight right. people. She, she only had to call eight people. So That's it. Like, it. We call it dialing for dollars. Get on the phone. Smile and dial. <laughs> That's it. Oh, oh I yeah. love it. It's so good. It's such good. You know, it's, I, I'm, I, I want to go over it and finish the other three questions clearly. Um, and then I'm going to have to figure out how I'm going to mitigate my mindset issue. <laughs> Um, and it will be interesting to hear and see Vinny's how yeah. his might be different. Yeah, get him to do it how- too. So there, yeah, yes. there's an audio on my website that tells you all five, goes through, it's 20 minute audio, goes through all five questions. And then it also tells you how to reprogram them. Good, good, so. good. Because I, you know what, listen, anybody who has spent, you know, a year in a partnership, you know, <laughs> whether it's a romantic one or a business one, let alone 40 of them. Yeah. Right. Like, you know, your money issues are different. Yeah. Like, you know, they are like, I totally know they are. 100%. And thankfully they blend enough to get through the day and the week and the year and the decades, but it will be interesting to see the places that my mindset might have affected him and us and the way yeah, his mindset has affected us. You'll have to report back us. to me and let me know. Yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> I can't wait. I have another interview in 10 minutes. I have to wait. I'm like, ah, I want to do it now. <laughs> and, you know, uh, I just one last thing. Like, people um, often tell me 
before they take it. Oh, I, I don't have any money mindset issues. I'm good. Oh, okay. Right? Sweetie, you're, you're the unicorn. Good for you. No, let's, let's or I've worked on my mi- mindset, but they haven't worked on the subconscious part. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I, I do a masterclass sometimes that goes through these questions. And that's why I get a lot of real feedback in that. And I remember this friend of mine, well, calling, and she was like, I came on here thinking I didn't have any money mindset issues. She goes, out of your five questions, I had four. Yeah. <laughs> like, That's interesting. Yeah. It's yeah. like, because you don't know it's there. And if yeah. you didn't, think- if, if you're rich and you're like swimming in the right. dough, then yeah, you yep. probably don't. But if you're not... Right. You probably but do. even then, I have to say, I think that that you you probably do. Yeah. I, I, how could you not? You're a human. Right. Come you're on, a human. you're wiring exactly. it screwed up. Come on, that's what happens. <laughs> you know, and it and you know it it always happens by what our darn parents said or did. Yep, but like we do the fault. same thing to our darn kids. <laughs> we created five star Nigaras, and the, all the guys are like, "Thanks for that." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's like it's so funny because I think. Like, look, we saw those first two of mine. The one is mitigated by the other. Yeah. Like, if I believe making money is easy, I can have a decent life, even though I think saving is hard. Yes. Because I'll just turn around. Just like that whole example Unless of the window Unless something happens meeting. to you. Right, right, Louis? right, 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 right. If yeah. I can't earn. Right? right. But see, but you know what's so funny? You know what I just heard in my brain? Oh, no, I figured it out. <laughs> Like, I, I literally just heard it in my brain. I literally, I'm like, nah. But I'll wouldn't it be great it not to have to? <laughs> yes, yes. All those things, all right? those things. But that that mindset is so deep in me. Like, literally, that was literally my thought. when Because yeah. I literally pictured if I was physically incapacitated, I was like, oh, she's talking about if you can't do it. And I literally went to, now I figure out a way. Now I what if you way. can't talk? <laughs> I don't know. Figure it I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about it. It is not a thing that keeps me up at night ever. Well, that's great. That, but that I am curious right, what though. the others are. Yeah. But that's that. That is. But you see, I think that is the proof of a mindset belief. That one happens to be positive. Mm-hmm. You understand? Yes. Like you can 100%. tell me ten. Well, what about this, Louis? And I just keep going. Whatever. Whatever. I'll figure it whatever. out. Whatever. I, I, I always I just money. don't. <laughs> literally, like I'll just call all the people in my world and say, "Okay, how are we going to do this? I need help. I've been helping you. Let's help me." You know, like I don't know what I do. I don't care. But see, that's yeah, the that's right. the like that is it's what so is ingrained so, into you that you yes. can't see the possibility of that not being. Nope. Nope, cannot. But that's why I'm so interested with the other questions, because the negative ones are as deep, Mm -hmm. too. Like, I'm not going to want to know them, but I know (laughs) if I know them, then I can start to change them. Yeah, and you can be conscious And I have a great life. What could it be if I didn't, if I had things to mitigate? Whoa. Like, that's beyond (laughs) comprehension right now. (laughs) Did I just blow your mind, Lorraine? (laughs) You have. You totally have. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Well, this was so much fun. I appreciate you. I appreciate your perspectives, Audrey. I mean, we will put the links in the show notes to all of your things. And, um, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with us. You're welcome. I had so much fun here. And I just, you know... I just want to say, everybody, you know, think about your mindset and really be conscious of it because it is so important. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. You know, a conversation on finances. That was fun, right? (laughs) You know, I've had interior design professionals on the podcast, Terry Taylor and Sandra Funk come to mind, talking about money mindset and how it makes or breaks us. But this is an accomplished finance expert that she's explaining. That is the first thing that she tackles when she works with her clients when trying to get their finances under control and working for them in their future. It's so interesting, this mindset thing. And of course, we know it's real. We know it's both the answer on how to build wealth. And it's also the thing that can hold us back from building wealth. And how about this? We have 80,000 thoughts per day. 95% of them come from our subconscious mind and our money mindset was formed before we were seven years old. (laughs) So here we are basically letting a seven-year-old run 
the money part of our business. Like, what is that about? Oh my goodness. This is what Audrey does. She helps you figure out your mindset, the thing that was built into you during your youth and either helps you to mitigate it helps you to leverage it, helps you to overcome it because there's positive and negatives in each of the mindsets that we've got built into us, right? They don't all have to go, right? We just have to know how to recognize them and work with them or around them or get rid of them, all right? From a young age, you could have been thinking money is hard. It stinks. You know, you rent, resent people with money. You think my, people that are rich are bad, right? Like whatever it is, you just have to figure it out and make that adjustment because here's the thing. Money isn't any of those things. Money has no characteristics. It isn't bad. It isn't good. It isn't lazy. It isn't smart. It isn't pretty. It isn't ugly. It isn't anything. It's a thing. It's a thing. What makes it all those things is the story between our ears, right? So for a more practical strategy though, and managing your finances is that looking at your finances every month. How about that statistic, right? Now, I'm not going to be the one to tell the Vincennes that he doesn't need to look at his finances every day and that looking at it every day apparently doesn't make that much of a big difference. You know, maybe when you meet him, you might tell him, <laughs> okay? But pretty much it's worked for him for the last five decades in business and I'm pretty sure he's going to keep doing it. But isn't that the point? Better to look every day than not look at all. So I think it's kind of fun to know that we only have to do it once a month and that will make a big difference. Personally, I like that. Your numbers tell a story. That's the thing. That's the thing that you learn when you finally do commit to understanding them. And when you read that story, whether it's daily like the Nagara or monthly like Audrey suggests, what happens is you see the trends and you start to learn what is working and what is not working. And here is the key. This is why those 80% are more successful because they're figuring it out every month what's working and not working. When you are in the middle of your money on a monthly basis and you see what's working, you double down, you do more. When you're in the middle of your money in a month and you see what's not working, you can change, you can pivot, you can reiterate. But if you don't look at it and you just show up once a year at the CPA, it's too late. It's like, it's done. You can't change it. And now what happens? A whole year has gone by. Think about it whole year has gone by where you could have been making good moves. You could have been leaning into good things, pulling back from things that weren't working. That's why the 80% are more successful because they are crafting their success all throughout the year, not waiting for the results at the end to see what happened. All right. Something else I have to mention because we preach it here is finding the right team. Having a team or golden nuggets, as Audrey calls them, who align with your core mission and values benefits all aspects of your business, inevitably leading to financial success, right? There is a two-part episode on window treatments for profit that I will link with Jessica Harling, where we recently talked about how to say goodbye and let someone go when they are, you know, not your garden variety employee in your business. Maybe they are your partner, whether it's a business partner partner or a life partner, or it's maybe it's a longtime cherished employee, or maybe it's your brother's kids, you know, whatever. Okay. See, part of having the right golden nuggets, as Audrey calls them, is also removing the people who don't belong there. And that is never easy. So if you're find yourself in this boat, head over to those episodes. If you're feeling like you want some help with your finances, don't forget we have Luann University. Starting this March 2024, we have Peter Lang who will be teaching a three-hour intensive course on securing financial success for your business. We also have Kim Merlitti, another fractional CFO, teaching increased profit with strategic time tracking. So both of these will be happening in March 2024. Go to luannuniversity.com to learn more and to register for these three-hour intensives. And I highly encourage you to go to Audrey's website, which we will link in the show notes. Answer her five questions. It's 20 minutes and it will help you recognize and start to reprogramming any limiting money mindset you might have. Remember, 
just answer quickly and honestly, whatever comes to your mind. It's kind of fun to do that, actually. And we have a goodie for you from this episode. If you're not sure and didn't know about it, a goodie is a checklist or a recap of the episode so that you have all of the important information right in front of you. It's especially handy if you've listened to, you're listening to the show while doing other things, going walking, laundry, and all the things. Go to Luann nigara.com forward slash goodies g-o-o-d-i-e-s all right audrey this was fun thank you thank you i really resonated with approaching a finance conversation by starting with your mindset we always have to first deal with the stories between our own ears before we can hear what experts like you are trying to teach us. I just love it. And thank you for joining me today. I am so proud of you for clicking on an episode that had the word finance in it. Yay, you decide to be excellent. Thank you for joining me today. This podcast is a production of Luann Nigara Inc. If you want to know more about me, my books, or Luann University, go to luannnigara.com. And if you are interested in having Window Works help you with your next window treatment or awning project in the New York, New Jersey metro area, go to windowworksnj.com to learn more. Have an excellent day.